Hey learners, welcome to Ahmed Coaching and I'm your teacher Dr. Anam. Today we will study about genomic library. Here the word genomic means a full set of genes of an individual. For example, you are studying a particular individual. It may be an animal, it may be a bacteria, it may be a virus. So all the genes present in that particular individual are actually called genome. Then comes the library. Library is a place where documents they are arranged or kept in an organized manner. It means that if you wanted to pick one particular document or a book you can easily pick one because all the things they are organized. So in case of genomic library instead of organizing documents we are actually organizing genes. So the genomic library is actually a collection of total genomic DNA from a single organisms which we are going to store in bacterial or bacteriophage clones. What actually the genomic library is that if you wanted to study a particular gene, what you are going to do that from a genomic library you are going to pick that gene and then you are going to study that gene. Like the normal library where the books they are stored in the shelves, in case of genomic library, the genes they are stored in the clones of bacteria or bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is actually a virus. So how you are going to create a genomic library? The different steps which are taken to make a genomic library includes first of all you are going to isolate the DNA from the cells of an individual. For example, you wanted to study a human cell. What you are going to do that you are going to take the cell and from the cell you are going to remove its genomic DNA. So here we have the genomic DNA. This DNA contains all the genes for that particular individual. After that you are going to slice your DNA into small pieces by using the restriction endonucleases or restriction enzymes. I have already explained what restriction enzymes are in my another video. I will share the link in the i button. You can check that out. So what you are going to do that you have genomic DNA now, then you are going to cut it into small fragments or small pieces. You are also going to take a plasmid or a vector and then you are going to cut that vector with the same restriction endonucleases you are cutting your DNA fragment. Now what actually the plasmid is? Plasmid is actually a circular DNA which is present in the bacteria. So we have now two DNA, one the circular DNA, the other one is the DNA fragments from our studied organism. They both are digested or uh, restricted with the endonuclease and same endonuclease not the different one but the same endonuclease you are going to use to cut your this DNA and your this plasmid vector. After that you are going to help the bacterial DNA to be placed into the vector. So here we can see that we have this plasmid vector and here we have this space. In this space we are going to place our this DNA and here we have our DNA placed in this vector. After the arrangement of the DNA in the vector we are going to enter this vector into our host bacteria. So here we can see we have the bacteria and we have inserted our this vector into this bacteria. After the entry of this vector into the bacteria, we are going to allow our bacteria to grow or make the clones of the inserted DNA fragments. So here you can see in the start we have one bacterial cell. As it is going to grow, the number of bacterial cell increases as well as the number of our studied genome or gene or vector is also increasing. So this all or the entire collection of clones is actually known as genomic library. Each clone has its own DNA, its own gene. So you can pick that gene from this genomic library to study. Now the problem is how you are going to pick your gene of interest. 
so there are different steps which you can use to study or pick up your gene of interest first of all you are going to need a particular probe now what probe is probe is actually a single stranded nucleic acid fragment which is complementary to your desired dna segment for example your dna segment is c t a g so your probe is going to be the complementary sequence of your desired dna so it is going to be g a t c this is your probe and now you are going to label your probe radioactively or fluorescently so we have labeled our probe the purpose of labeling is that when this probe is going to bind with your dna segment you can identify it by the radioactivity or by the light or the fluorescence this probe is going to produce so the steps to identify a particular dna segment includes that you have your bacterial clones you are going to allow these bacteria to grow on a agar plate so every colony is actually a different bacteria with different gene of interest after that you are going to take a filter paper and then you are going to place your filter paper on this battery plate and very carefully you are going to remove your filter paper now the filter paper is here and all the clones which are on the battery plate now they have the spot on the filter paper or in other word the bacteria they have attached themselves with the filter paper after that you are going to enter your labeled probe here you can see this is single stranded and here you can see it is labeled it may be labeled radioactively or it may be labeled fluorescently after that this labeled probe is going to bind with its particular complementary sequence you can see there are so many bacteria it means that we have so many genes but this probe is going to bind with a specific bacteria or with a specific colony now we know that this colony is actually our colony which we wanted to study for our particular gene so what we are going to do we are going to separate that colony and then we are going to grow this bacteria further and after that we are going to isolate our gene of interest and then we can study our gene of interest from the genomic library so this is how you create genomic library this is how you use probes to study the particular dna segment or your gene of interest if you have still any question related to genomic library you can ask me in the comment section i will see you in the next video